FIFA expresses hope for a, a rapid cessation of hostilities and for peace in uh, Ukraine. FIFA condemns as well the use of force by Russia in Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin launched a military invasion on Ukraine and the world is once more suffering from the impact of war. What Putin didn't expect, however, is the direct consequences this would have in world football. Russia are out of the World Cup, Chelsea has lost its owner, and the world is calling for a boycott of Russian footballers. In this video, we'll take a look at the eight direct consequences the war on Ukraine has caused so far in football. The strongest measure so far? FIFA has eliminated Russia from the World Cup playoffs. At first, their rivaling nation Poland and their rivals to be in a hypothetical final, Sweden and the Czech Republic, refused to play in Russia. Then Poland refused to play against Russia altogether. Even Lewandowski spoke his mind on Twitter. FIFA responded by prohibiting the country from participating in any of their tournaments. But that meant that a team of Russian athletes with no flag, anthem or home ground in Russia would face Poland, similar to what the International Olympic Committee did to the country. And the final decision was to completely eliminate Russia from the World Cup race, a decision which ranks among the most controversial ones in football history. Russia will not play the World Cup playoffs and are eliminated from FIFA and UEFA competitions until further notice. UCL final moved. The Gazprom Arena in St. Petersburg was meant to host the 2022 Champions League final on the 28th of May. However, just 24 hours after Russia's coordinated strike, UEFA president Alexander Cheferin called for an extraordinary meeting to address the issue. Public pressure caused the debate as a sporting event of the magnitude of a Champions League final was seen as an undeserved merit for Russia given the political context. Now it's been decided that the final will be relocated to France, more specifically the Stade de France in Paris. UEFA wishes to express its thanks and appreciation to the French Republic President Emmanuel Macron for his personal support and commitment to have European club football's most prestigious game moved to France at a time of unparalleled crisis. Russian teams banned from Europe? UEFA confirmed no games will take place in Russia, but hasn't given more information on what will happen to Spartak Moscow's match against RB Leipzig. UEFA also decided that it would relocate any games and tournaments it controls that were to be played in Russia and Ukraine, whether involving clubs or national teams, until further notice. That was in the same statement that communicated the venue change for the UCL final. By the looks of it, Spartak would keep on playing in this edition of the Europa League, but the future was uncertain. And following public pressure, UEFA has decided to ban Spartak Moscow from this season's Europa League. RB Leipzig will therefore advance to the quarterfinals. FIFA and UEFA have today decided together that all Russian teams, whether national representative teams or club teams, shall be suspended from participation in both FIFA and UEFA competitions until further notice. One might argue, but what does a club like Spartak Moscow have to do with the actions of the government of its country? And the truth is, there's hardly a satisfactory answer to this. Russian sponsorships banned. There's an ugly truth in football we don't like to look at until we are left with no option. A lot of money is being fueled into the game by shady and controversial entities. A lot. Russian gas company Gazprom has everything. Just have a look at their supporting sports section in their webpage. They basically own Zenit, Putin's favorite club. And in 2018, it was leaked that Gazprom were cheating the financial fair play rules by disguising investment in their club to the tune of $145 million. UEFA had to sanction them, but gave them a light punishment because Gazprom is one of the eight main sponsors of the UEFA Champions League. Better say, was. In less than 24 hours, German club Schalke 4 have canceled their sponsorship deal with Gazprom, removing them from their shirts. And now UEFA has confirmed that the deal with Gazprom has been canceled and removed from all its competitions. The same happened to Manchester United, who has cut ties with their own sponsor, Russian Airlines Aeroflot, a commercial partner of the Red Devils since 2013. The UK government on Thursday banned Aeroflot from flying in its airspace. Does any other team in England with Russian ties come to mind? The end of Roman Abramovich? The man that changed Chelsea's fortunes is on the UK blacklist. Though not seen in London for months, Abramovich is now strictly forbidden from entering the UK due to his close relationship with Vladimir Putin. Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the UK is sanctioning five Russian banks and three oligarchs, but Abramovich was not on that list. Chelsea's owner has always denied being close to the Kremlin or having done anything which could see him being punished. In other words, it doesn't matter if you look guilty, you have to be proven guilty too. 
Amidst all the rumors, Abramovich shocked Chelsea fans by voluntarily stepping down from his role at the club. For the news yesterday, I think that it will change uh, nothing for me on a daily basis. Football stopped. The Ukrainian Premier League has, of course, been suspended until further notice, ever since the local authorities declared martial law. Of course, there are no conditions for a football league to go on, but the ramifications of it are bigger than deciding if Shakhtar or Dynamo lift the trophy again. First, once FIFA decides what happens with the playoff between Ukraine and Scotland, there will be the added question of, is it fair? Not only will Ukraine not be able to play at home, the majority of their squad play in their domestic league. From the last call-up on November of 2021, only eight footballers played outside of their country. Sobol, Chakaraba, Yarmolenko, Zinchenko, Malinovsky, Kovalenko, Zubkov, and Yuremchuk. While 15 players in the squad hail from the domestic league, mainly from Dynamo and Shakhtar, how is it fair to hold a playoff for a World Cup place in these conditions? Talent Exodus The start of the conflict saw Brazilian players from rival Ukrainian clubs bunk together and join in a call for help to their own country. Their clubs are helping them, but they need a way out. They are, sadly, not alone. Former Roma coach Paolo Francesca is trapped in Kiev. Olá a todos. Estou, estou em Kiev. É verdade. Eu e minha família estamos numa situação muito complicada, num momento de guerra que para mim é obviamente inaceitável. Mas eu acredito que, que a paz vai prevalecer e temos que continuar fortes. Uh, tenho recebido imensos telefonemas, imensas mensagens de Portugal, de, 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 de Itália, de todo, de todo o mundo e quero desta forma agradecer a todos a preocupação que têm revelado uh, por mim e pela minha família. Espero ver-vos em breve e um abraço a todos. The mental state of expats. While international footballers look for a way out of Ukraine, the Ukrainian ones playing abroad are desperate to keep up with what's going on back home and what is happening to their families. Carlo Ancelotti said of Real Madrid's goalkeeper Lunin, of course, Lunin doesn't have the same spirit as before. He has his mother, his friends there. He's very worried. It affects his spirit. Training helps you not to think about these things. All this affects him. Pep Guardiola also commented on Alexander Zinchenko's present state of mind. Well, it's worry. What would we feel if our country, when we were born, we have a family and friends, is attacked, uh, killing innocent people? How would you feel? And West Ham's coach, David Moyes, confirmed Yarmolenko has been given time off by the club. The consequences of this tragic confrontation are only starting to develop. We will do our best to keep you updated on the football news that are relevant to this story. We hope peace can be found and the unnecessary violence is stopped at once. Football is a universal language that connects people around the world, and on more than one occasion, it had the power to stop armed conflicts and wars. Here are four of the times when football actually stopped wars. 